Is the 2023 Honda CRV the best hybrid crossover SUV? Well, you'll have to tell me what you think down in the comments after watching the video. Obviously, for 2023, the CRV is fully redesigned. So we're going to talk about what's new. We're going to talk about the differences in size. And there are some changes there, although they're not necessarily massive, but it is a little bit bigger. But I believe there are some very positive changes on the interior for the new generation. I borrowed this model from my friends here at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana. The sticker price is $35,650. Let's get started with our tour. If you are interested in the hybrid version of the CRV, you're going to have to go with the Sport or Sport Touring trim level. Regardless of what trim level you go with, you're going to have 1.6 inches increase in wheelbase. If you're not familiar with what wheelbase is, that's the center of one tire to the center of the other. The overall length increases from bumper to bumper by 2.7 inches, and that's not really a lot when you think about it. It's 2.7 inches, not 2.7 feet. And the smallest increase of the increases in size will come in the overall width of the CRV at 0.4 inches. And everything completely redesigned here. I know some people are likely going to say one of two things that the rear taillights that are LED, that the housing is very similar to that of the previous generation. I don't know about that. I'll see if I can remember to put the images in that I have of the two years, a 22 and a 23 parked side by side, where you can tell there's definitely not a lot of similarities. Now, does it look similar to Volvo? Yeah, I think it does. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's take a look at what we have as far as the rest of the vehicle goes. The front end is more squared off, but at the same time, it's still going to have some nice sloping lines to it, some character lines. That's going to look very nice. LED daytime running lights, LED headlights, and quite a bit of gloss black here. With the brow across, would you rather see that in maybe a matte black finish, chrome? What do you think? Tell me what your thoughts are on that. We'll continue with the gloss black onto the upper grill with that nice large Honda logo in the center. And not as much gloss on the lower grill. Obviously, in the center there, it's going to be a matte black finish, but still a nice look nonetheless. And for this all-wheel drive CRV, how about tire and wheel size? 235 on the width. We're going to have a 60 series sidewall that obviously shines up nicely and complements the gloss black 18 inch wheel. And let's talk about a couple of things that I know all of you like to know about. The remote for one combination of gloss black and matte black on there. But the main thing people like to know about, does it have that? Yes, it does. Remote start. And the other thing that seems to be a popular question, if I don't talk about it, is right here. Turn signal indicators are built in to the heated power adjustable but manually folding side view mirrors with the gloss black mirror cap. You do have the proximity key. You do have the gloss black roof rails up here. And honestly, to finish that off, in my personal opinion, it would be nice to have a gloss black shark fin antenna, but not necessarily a big deal. And we finish things off with the functional and nice looking rear roof spoiler back here. It just wouldn't look the same without that. I think that it would just, I don't know, it would look incomplete, at least in my personal opinion. Now, one thing I do wish Honda had done, this is just from the automotive journalist standpoint, most of you probably won't care about this, but they should have hidden away the rear window wiper up here in the rear roof spoiler. It just makes it look better, a little more clean back here. All wheel drive logo is here. And obviously, this being the sport trim level, well, you're gonna have the sport logo right there and the exhaust finishers right here. Technically, those are just for decoration only, decorative purposes only, because the exhaust pipe is actually inside, not actually connected there. Not a big deal, but that is a great segue to talking about what's under the hood. One big advantage to this particular model is that it is not a plug-in hybrid. It is not full EV. So no matter what, you still have the two liter gas engine to get you where you need to go. That really helps with reliability. So what we have is the combination of that two liter four cylinder and the hybrid powertrain. 204 horsepower, 247 pounds feet of torque. And even though the sticker says it's mated to a continuously variable transmission, yes, we know it is an ECVT. But what about those MPGs? 40 city 
34 out on the highway, 37 combined and 2.7 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven is what Honda says you should use. Now you might wonder, aren't those numbers reversed? Well, compared to a common gas burning vehicle, yes, they are. And here's why. When you're driving around in the city in the stop and go situations, you're more likely to use the hybrid end of things here than you are out on the highway. Hence the difference in gas mileage. Regardless, those numbers are very good. And again, from an automotive journalist standpoint, I do like the fact that the hood struts are here. I didn't have to go hunting around for a manual prop rod to hold the hood up. Just a little added bonus, at least for me. And I don't know that I've ever seen a CRV towing anything, but Honda says you can tow up to 1,000 pounds. And cargo capacity is going to range between 36.6 up to 39.3 cubic feet, depending on whether you have the hybrid or non-hybrid version, up to a max of 76.5 cubic feet. And the differences between hybrid and non-hybrid are going to be found right here because with the non-hybrid version, I can't show you on this one, but you can actually change the position of the floor down here. So that will increase or decrease cargo capacity. We still, still have quite a bit here regardless of which model you buy. We do have the nice cargo lighting here on both sides and a 12 volt power outlet if you want to maximize cargo capacity. Well, that's pretty easy to do. You're gonna come right here. There's a release on the top of the seat and we're gonna let that down on both sides. And here's the cool thing. You can actually recline these seats way back as you can see. That's not gonna be the conventional seating position this is. So let's take a look at what else we have. Large door bins, comfortable armrest. We're gonna do the armrest test real quick and I can confirm, yep, that's comfortable. I think it would be for quite a while. When you push on that this way, kind of like you're testing for the doneness of a steak on your grill, it doesn't feel very soft, but when you put your arm up there, it actually feels softer than it does to the poke test. And as is common with a lot of Honda vehicles, we have no seat pocket, seat pocket only on one side but you do have the air conditioning vents back here dual air conditioning vents on the rear of the center console as well as the dual usb ports i always think there should be three because you have seating for three people back here but we haven't seen that just yet not a big deal necessarily you do have the conventional size sunroof i know a lot of people were hoping for the panoramic sunroof but that didn't happen this year. Not necessarily a big deal, but tell me what your thoughts are on that, because I know there are varying opinions from varying people saying, yeah, I wish it had a sunroof or a panoramic sunroof compared to the conventional size, or maybe no sunroof at all. What are your thoughts? Looking in through the passenger side front door, we're gonna have a lot of the same look and feel as we did with the rear doors. Comfortable on the armrest once again, and then a little bit more space with the door bin. And if your passenger in the front seat says, I forgot what kind of vehicle this is, just tell them to look right here because it says CRV right there. Now, in this particular case on the sport trim level, we're going to have a power driver's seat, a manually adjustable but still fully adjustable passenger seat. And we'll hop inside and take a quick look across at the changes that you'll see here, very similar to that of the 11th generation of the Honda Civic. And then we're going to have the gloveless glove box. There is a lot of space for gloves in there if you actually put gloves in your glove box. I don't know that I know anybody who does. And depending on your situation, you might do that, you might not. Connectivity, again, here in the front seat, two different choices on USB. We have a 12-volt power outlet, a little bit of space right here. Conventional style shifter. Here's one of the big changes. You'll notice that there are a lot of changes in this area. We have the floating touchscreen and everything isn't angled and the shifter isn't in this area anymore. That really cleans things up, I think, gives it a more modern look, but I know a lot of you are gonna be glad that at the very least, there is no push button shifter. That's always good. You're gonna go through your driving modes here, hill descent, control, and hill start assist, parking brake, and brake hold mode. You know what those are, they're cup holders, right? A little bit more space right here and the multitasking lid for the console. Why is it multitasking? Because it's also an armrest that's also comfortable. And it's fairly deep, a lot of space down in there. You can control the power sliding sunroof right here, and you do have the sunglass holder 
in this area. No conversation mirror, but I don't know that that really matters to a lot of people. The vanity mirror is going to be here on the sun visor. Hi, everybody. And obviously, a good thing to say or answer, question to answer, how far back does the sun visor come? Well, you can see right there. Actually, it's just about covering the entirety of the window to keep sun from shining in when necessary. When the driver wants to exercise that 204 horsepower and 247 pounds-feet of torque, well, there's the oh crap handle in case anybody gets scared. And here on the driver's side door, we're not going to see a lot of differences compared to what we saw on the passenger side, other than being able to control those heated power adjustable side view mirrors, lock and unlock the doors, which you can do on both. You can lock the windows and control all four windows right there. If you want to turn traction control off, I don't know why you would, but you could right there. And then you can drop this lever and control the positioning of the steering wheel. It's tilt and telescopically adjustable. We'll put our foot on the brake, hit the button to fire things up. It just doesn't seem appropriate to say fire things up with 204 horsepower, but that's what I'm saying. And you can see who's wearing their seat belt and who isn't right here. Nice digital instrument cluster and definitely going to have a lot of good information that you can go through right here as far as anything you might want to know about the vehicle. I don't know if I can get it to do that right now. We're not going to worry about going through everything here, but there is a lot of good information. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So you can see what all is here as far as that goes. If you want to know how much charge capacity the vehicle has, well, there you go. You know how to see that now. And all you have to do is use the scroll button right here to go through all of that. If you want to go home, you can just hit the home button right there if you need to go back to where you were. You do have adaptive cruise control. You have Honda sensing, obviously, with lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation. All of that good stuff is here. And here is the infotainment screen that we took a quick look at earlier. It is a floating touch screen. It is vertical now. That's going to help reduce glare. That's a good thing, at least when the sunroof isn't open. And I don't think I'm in a position where that's going to be an issue. But I guess that could actually cause a little bit of a glare. But not having it angled back like it was on the previous generation will definitely make a difference. And you do have your dual zone climate control here. You can sync those two together if you would like to, or you can turn that off. And depending on the situation, well, everybody can have things set the way they want. You do have the heated seats for the driver and the passenger, but since we're heading for 80 degrees today, that's kind of pointless. And we'll go into reverse to take a look at our multi-view rear view camera. You can see the three different views here. That seems to be more responsive than it was in the previous generation. So that's a good thing. One more thing I do want to cover. Let's go through our driving mode. You can see what you have here. There's your sport driving mode. You can see the graphic there on the screen. We'll let you see normal. There's what the graphic looks like for normal. Econ mode is right there. And there's also a snow mode in case you want to drive in the snow. And I would highly recommend the all-wheel drive version if you're going to drive in the snow a good bit. This is all-wheel drive, but I guarantee you, we're sure not going to encounter any snow out on the test drive. All right, here we go on the test drive. And I wanted to get on a road that is kind of classic to Louisiana driving in that it's anything but smooth. So we can give you a little bit of an example of what the road noise is like. So I'll let you listen for a few seconds. I don't know how well my microphone is picking that up. By the way, that Toyota FJ, or excuse me, yeah, Toyota FJ Cruiser back there is driving way under the speed limit. Well, that's because they were about to make a U-turn. So in case you thought I was driving way too fast and trying to exercise that 204 horsepower, I wasn't really doing that. But you might have varying opinions on what the road noise sounds like with this CRV. Well, keep something in mind. Number one, it's as quiet as it can be in here. That's for the purpose of the video because I want you to be able to hear. So the fan speed for the air conditioner is not what it probably should be on a warm day like this. Don't have the radio on and I don't have anyone to talk to. Well, other than you, but you can't talk back. So keep that in mind. It may seem a little bit on the noisy side in here. It really isn't that bad considering the fact that 
This is not a smooth road by any means. That's definitely going to make it sound a lot worse than it really is. But the ride quality is very impressive. This particular road is a road that I travel quite regularly and it's definitely anything but smooth. But I barely notice that here in this CRV. So comfortable ride quality. The seating is comfortable, even though this is cloth seating, still very comfortable. Leather wrapped steering wheel, that itself is obviously very comfortable and a very easy vehicle to see out of. Now it doesn't have blind spot monitoring. I guess there's some kind of a shortage right now on some of that as you won't see that on some of these vehicles. So I don't know how much of an issue that is for most people. I know for me, I'm still not used to having blind spot monitoring in a vehicle purely because of the fact that I've been driving too long and I have the habit of looking into my blind spot and all that kind of stuff. But one way or another, I have to give the CRV high marks. One thing I will say here, I know there are still a lot of people out there who don't have all the technology that's available in these Honda vehicles. And you're saying to yourself, that's what's scaring me. That's what's keeping me away. Tom, what do you recommend? I don't want to have to deal with learning all of that infotainment screen and all of the different technology there. Eventually, I think just about everybody is going to have to bite the bullet where that's concerned. With the Honda vehicles, it's not an issue. Very easy to learn, very easy to use. It's quite simplified here. There are other models on the market that are not Hondas that are more difficult to learn. So if that's an issue for you, you can mark that off. Here with these Honda vehicles, no big deal at all. Overall, a great vehicle. Fun to drive, comfortable, it has enough power to get the job done for what it is. You're not looking for high performance here because you're looking for good gas mileage and obviously more power means better or worse gas mileage. So overall, definitely a front runner in its category, that's for sure. So now it's your turn to talk or to type. Down in the comments section, is this the best hybrid crossover SUV, the 2023 Honda CRV? I did not mean for that to rhyme, by the way, but it did. So tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did. I'm always curious to know. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this CRV for the day. Remember, if you want to know more about this particular model, make sure to check out the link in the description of the video. You can come into Holmes Honda and buy this model or any other that they have available. Whoever you talk to, tell them that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you. I also have to say a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.